back and prepare to laugh. It's the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Welcome everybody, this is the Drunk Nerds Podcast, episode 19. I am your host, the Jack of Hearts, and with me this week is the raging ginger boy himself. Ginger boy! <laughs> What's up, guys? I thought I thought you were William Shatner, not Jack of Hearts. Uh, hey guys, ginger boy here. We're here to, we've been playing a lot of games. I had today off, so I played a lot of crap ton of games. We'll get in, you'll, you'll, we'll get into that here in a little bit. Then you'll hear everything, you'll hear all about it. I don't have much to say other than that, but other than today was my first day off. I was three straight days off, so I'm pretty I'm in pretty good mood right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm done talking. All right, fantastic. Right. And to my right corner of the turnbuckle is Knuckles. Damn it. How you doing, Knuckles? <laughs> I was actually going to go into William Shatner, but you beat me to it. <laughs> but, uh... Gone! Oddly enough, I did watch Star Trek in Darkness this morning. I'm sorry. How I wrong? Hey, that movie is good. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay. Have you even watched it? Nope. Have you <laughs> seen the other Star Trek movie? Yeah, they don't really care for that one, so. Uh, okay. Well, okay, let did me just. you kind of enjoy Star Trek, uh, the old series and the old movies? Never watch it. Okay, well, really? never mind. Yeah. Think... More of a Firefly kind of guy. I think the only God Star Trek it. movie you I and, ever. You <laughs> and Firefly. <laughs> I think the only Star Trek movie I ever watched was, like, uh, that one with, uh... God, what is that movie where they try to save that freaking like, whales or something like that? Oh, oh God. I think that was, uh... Let's see, either... Star, there's I think Star it was Trek, Rathcon, something... I think that might have been five or six. That must Pinocchio? have been five or six. Was it Pinocchio? Where the, the is Pinocchio. Yeah, where they travel back in time and stuff to get a whale or something like that, and, uh... You know, just to get it back to the future or something like that. I don't know. It's I think that crazy. was an episode of Futurama. <laughs> no, that episode of Futurama, I think, was making fun of that and making fun of, uh... It was, it was like, uh, Leela went mad searching for the white whale. Yeah. It was actually making fun of, uh... Moby Dick. Yeah, Moby Dick, yeah. It was more than anything. Oh, but my I like God. That, I probably like that episode better than, like, any Star Trek movie. Anyways, we're, we're not here to talk about Star Trek. We are not the Star Trek podcast, thank God. Uh... <laughs> We are the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. We talk about video games. Okay, well, speaking of video games, guys, what you been playing? Ginger Boy. So I've heard you've been uh, playing something other than Pokemon. Yeah, I. Um, so it's kind of funny. Um, Sam from Geek Time will be getting a lot of mentions in this. Uh, we've actually uh, coincidentally did the exact same thing. Uh, last night, he went out to Redbox, rented Beyond Two Souls. Yeah. Last night, I went to Redbox and rented Beyond Two Souls. <laughs> um, he basically stayed up all night and played it, played through it in one sitting. And then uh, I played it for a couple hours last night and then woke up like 6 o'clock this morning. I'm not sure why, but I did. And I pretty much played it all the way up till like noon and finally beat the game. Holy crap. It's kind of funny we did the exact same thing. Um, I kind of wish Sam was here right now. Cause, or, like, all right, so anyway, uh, so Sam and uh, I... Just just basically, go ahead, you You're in love with that guy. Oh, sure. Yeah, a little bit. There's no doubting that. Romance. But, yeah. Anyway. Anyways. No, so, pretty much all afternoon, like, no, like, for a good hour or so, we, we are messaging back and forth our thoughts on it. And I wish I could just read you what I said, um, but there's a lot of spoilers in it. <laughs> so, I guess, um... Hey, I'll just... what are you wearing? <laughs> I'm actually like, wearing... What, what Pokemon did you get? Oh, you got Pikachu, <laughs> huh? Hi, Sam. It's me, Ginger Boy. I'm my biggest fan. No, um, no, but I'm wearing, I'm wearing sweatpants and a hoodie right now. Anyways, um, so, I guess we can go, I can go ahead and just kind of, uh, talk about this game. Um, it wasn't very good. Okay, well, uh, what did you not like about it? Almost everything. Oh, really? <laughs> so... Let me kind of, okay, so Beyond Two Souls is the one that has Ellen Page, has William Dafoe, um, and it's made by the people that made Heavy Rain. Quantum, I believe. Quantic Quantum Dream, Dreams. yeah. Quantum, whatever that whatever their name is, who cares. <laughs> um, so they made it, and so they're really big on still, telling stories and not so much on the gameplay. Uh-huh. It's basically, you know, like Heavy Rain, everybody knows, like a lot of people know it was, um, 
a lot of uh, quick time events and just things like that. This game is not is less of a game than Heavy Rain. How in the like, hell can it be less okay. of a game than Heavy Rain? I mean, that's just least bottom... Heavy Rain. There was some tension, and you under like you can you know there was a lot of action points in the game, uh-huh. and a lot of things we needed to move quickly and think. This game is not a lot of that. Eighty probably seventy five eighty percent of the movements you make like are pointless to make. Like it's a movie. Like a five minute cutscene, and then like all of a sudden, like I'll say the okay, I'll, the game, the graphically, the game is gorgeous. You can't, I, I can't tell when I'm in a cutscene and when I'm in the game. Like they look exactly the same. Huh. So I'll give it that. But like, so you're in a cutscene, and then like now, oh now you gotta start doing stuff, and like hold R1 to solve a math problem, <laughs> or hold X to fall asleep, <laughs> or pick up the apartment. Make Asian beef. That's <laughs> awesome. That's what I want to do. I want to... Th- this is what a lot of the freaking game is. There, I, no, no, there's sections of the game where, like, you're doing a lot... There's a lot of action in it. But, like, and it, but it's all kind of, like, together at one point. And then you get... There's 24 chapters. Yeah. Or 26 if you include the prologue yeah. and the epilogue. But there's 24 you play. And so... You, you have, like, three or four missions where you're just doing, like... So, I should explain the game a little better first. So, the game takes place between, like, when uh, Jody is the name of the girl who's uh, who play, is played by Ellen Page. And she has, like, um, this spirit that is, like, attached to her. But there's, like, a, this weird cord yeah. that attaches them together. So, he can't go very far from Jody. Huh. And so, she gets pretty much... She spends her entire life with... Um, Pretty much in like this government base, like it lives like an, an apartment, and she and Nathan, who is played by William Defoe, and then there's another guy I can't think of his name, is played by Cole. These like the two guys, they basically like raise her in this, like they're the scientists and everything like that, and trying to figure out what is going on. Like she has these power, all these powers where she, uh, Aiden, Aiden's the name of the spirit, can like move things for her, or just like she can, he can it can possess people, right. And, like, you know, just make, you know, just do whatever they want. Things like that. So, you know, you said that automatically. My mom went to Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, with this, it's like, you'll have, like, like these really cool moments. Like, one out of every four chapters I thought I really enjoyed. But it's like, each chapter is anywhere from, like, 10 to, like, 40 minutes. And there's a lot of these, like, short, like, 10 to 20 minute chapters of, like, you're just doing, like, you're just doing nothing. Like, it, and the problem Let is, I don't like shower. about it. You, you can do that. No, so, like, the, the story jumps all over the place. So, you'll, like, you start off, like, she's trying to escape from the police. And then it jump the next chapter is now she's a five-year-old girl. And so... Like one like so like I right, I skipped the play I did all these cool things now I'm a little girl and you're starting to figure out what's going on, how like you know her discovering these powers things like that and but you but you're not really doing anything exciting like go hey go get the can you go get the olive oil out of the garage for me okay why don't you go outside and like you get in a snowball fight or you you freak you know and she's a kid or then like she's, uh, is there any awkward moments like it say it's her time of the month or something like that. <laughs> um, I don't, not that I experienced, but no, like, it, it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of potential, there was a lot of potential this game. Like, it, I would say I enjoyed about a quarter of the gameplay portions, and I loved watching the game. The story's not great, but the acting is fantastic. Like, Ellen Page, William Defoe, pretty much every, all the main characters knocked out of the park. Okay, well, let me ask you this question. Can you eat a McRib inside this game? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't I, you might be able to that might be one of the options instead of cooking stir fry, um, but no it's just it's just infuriating just the fact that it, there's like you you get the you get this really great like it's like kind of like like the boss battle yeah like there's three chapters of build up and then like the fourth chapter is just the boss battle and those parts are really cool it's just the, the 45 minutes to an hour you spend of just daily crap that I do every day that I don't want to do anyways. You have to do in a video game. That's not very fun. I will admit that some of the story elements are pretty cool about it. Right. And I like if I can just watch if 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 they just made this a movie, 
Like, it was an animated movie, with, and I just cut it down to, like, three hours. I would have loved this. Like, I really would have loved that movie. Would you? But, a three-hour animated movie? With, with the same actors, and, like, it looks exactly the same? Yes. Like, that's how great the acting is. It's like it's like Hobbit, the movie. Like, the acting is brilliant. Uh-huh. But that movie is, um, is meh. The, the, eh. That's uh, you know we can get that. Uh, <laughs> Wait, you just say did you say the Hobbit was mm, meh? The movie, the movie. You only saw part one of the three part movie. Yeah, I'm talking about that individual movie. No one's seen ep- episode two of Hobbit. No. <laughs> so, anyways, back to this crap game I was playing. So, I it, it's frustrating because I want to say this is the like play this game, but. It's, oh man, it's hard to say, because, like, there's really cool, I enjoyed a quarter of the, like, I enjoyed watching the game, I enjoyed those boss battles, I don't really know what to call them, Mm -hmm. but there's, it took me about, probably eight hours to beat this game, and I'd probably say I enjoyed three hours of it. Oh boy. And it's just like, and there's problems where, like, like, there's one mission, I don't want to get into it, but, like. Like, so she gets trained by, like, the CIA. She basically becomes a soldier. Yeah. Because she has these unique abilities and it helps in battle and stuff like that. So she, um, so she goes into this mission where she has to, like, you know, sneak in and kill a certain person. Right. And, like, you can have Aiden, the spirit, take over, like, uh, you know, a body, take over one of the soldiers. You're trying, you're trying to sneak around, you know. She's supposed to be a silent mission. And, she, and you could take over a soldier and, like, uh, have him kill other people. Or, like, open a door for you, or just, you know, what, any sort of thing like that. Huh. But what I don't understand, though, is she can only do that with, like, some enemies. But, like, there's, like, there's, like, seven enemies, but only one out of the seven she can actually do it with. And it's just, like, I don't understand, like, I know it's a game and you know, things like that, but it's just, it's kind of weird to me. Like, I, even though I enjoy that level, things like that are weird. Like, why can't, why can't I only take over this one guy? Or there's moments where I get in this big, huge fight with, like, um, one, like I get into a fight with the person that gets possessed yeah. by another spirit. There's other, it's, it's a whole, I don't want to get into the whole story. But there's other spirits out there, and, like, th- this person gets um, taken over, get, gets possessed by the spirit and wants to kill Jody. And basically, it's like a four-minute fight, and Jody gets her ass kicked for, like, four minutes. Of it, and then like the last part, she gets like she gets like a, a brick and smashes it over his head and kills him. Okay. And like Aiden does nothing to help. <laughs> it's like Aiden, you. But then three minutes later in the game, there's like ten guys coming at you that are possessed by spirits, and with you get to use Aiden, and he kills all of them in like thirty seconds. <laughs> like what? Like I just spent four minutes trying to dodge this guy's attacks. It basically just beats me up, and then I, I, I finally kill him. When you could have just did something, with a click of a button, I just killed ten. Like, what? <laughs> like, I know it's a game, but it's still got to make sense. It doesn't. The WTF moment. <laughs> kind of like how, uh, going back to those X, those somewhat crappy X movies where you have, where you see Professor X, like, freezing time. And yeah. then you see, like, all those missiles coming at him. Yeah, him and everyone and, else on that beach. It's like I know, like you, hey, you enjoyed the, like I, that movie's great, and you let that thing go, and when it's not so great of a movie, you nitpick those things to death. And maybe if it was a really good game, I would let it go. But when you, it's uh, it's it's hard to say because like I've had people like were asking, would you recommend this? Oh. <laughs> and it, I'm having issues. Like I don't want to say it's definitely not a buy because you you can just it's eight hours. I would say if you're interested enough in the story um, and you it. like Heavy Rain, do what what I and Sam did. Red box it and make sure you have enough time where you can knock it out in like one day and then take that thing back and take the – and $2 is – for $2, I got my money's worth out of it. <laughs> but <laughs> I could not recommend this anymore. $5 is pushing it. So God, man, that is my experience. But beyond, to, I, I wish I could just read like I the message I sent to Sam is like a page long of like and it has like eight paragraphs in it breaking down every little thing I hate about it. Mm-hmm. But it's a lot of spoilers in it. So I don't know. Like, I wish I could just show you to show this to you, but. dude. 
everything you just described just kind of reminds me of like a, a blend of like the blend of two games, like sort of uh, Indigo Prophecy or like a Geist or even to a certain extent the Third Birthday, which is like the the third like uh, Parasite Eve game and stuff like that. Those start the elements mixed in with Heavy Rain, and I'm just getting this hodgepodge of shit and bile. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's frustrating because I think if more of the game could have been like those boss battles, I, I don't know why I keep calling them boss battles. They're not really boss battles, but they're big. They're these big moments in the game that kind of define Jody's life and like the way she is and things like that. But like those moments are like I really really like those moments. If if half of the game, if they could have cut out like half of the filler crap and just put that, I would say like I wouldn't. I don't know if I would say bye. But I'd still say it's a strong rent. Like, I would recommend anybody to rent that game. But it's just, at this point, I don't know. It's it, I, if, if I had to rate this game on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably go 6. And I don't like rating games, but that's kind of how I'm in with that game. Oh, boy. So let's talk about something that will make me happy. <laughs> and something we've all been how playing. How many hours have you put into it? What? Uh, what we're about to Beyond? Talk. No, uh, Pokemon. Oh, uh, 13, 14 hours. Okay, he has one more hour before he quits playing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. We, so, let, let's let's get into it. Okay. Jack, Jack, set it up. Okay, well, anyway, guys, since uh, all of us have been pretty much playing the same game, let's just go ahead and just go into Pokemon X and Y discussion. So, to give a little pace, just get a little break from Ginger Boy for a moment. Knuckles... What's your experience been with uh, the Pokemon X and Y? Honestly, I've been a huge Pokemon fan since God knows when. But for this one, it's been a lot more challenging for me. And I don't know if it's because I've been kind of out of the Pokemon loop for a while. Like, I have no idea what I can name. Probably still name the first 150, maybe 200 Pokemon. 250 Pokemon. I couldn't name any Pokemon after that. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so it's challenging for me. It's like... Okay, there's, what, 720 Pokemon now? It's getting close to around 700, yeah. I think it's like 675 or something. There's like some ridiculous amount. I was like... Oh my god. But, um... <laughs> for what I'm enjoying it, a lot, I'm enjoying playing it. There are a few little aspects I can nitpick about it, like, like for the fact that, it's, to me, it seems like it's more uh, meant for the competitive uh, Pokemon players, which, to me, kind of sounds retarded. But uh, I know there is that niche out there, mainly because of the whole. For me, it seems like uh, my Pokemon is like seven levels higher than yours, and have the top advantage. But just because my par- my Pokemon is not the right nature, it seems like uh, my attacks aren't doing anything, and which is sad because I have a level twenty, like level thirty Pikachu, and uh, I'm fighting a level twenty three uh, Starly or whatever that evolved form is. Starly, no. No, the... Yeah, whatever that stupid bird Staravia. is. Staravia. Oh. And, uh... Fucking... He, uh... My Pikachu will do, like, thunder... Or, like, electric ball. And it'll only take it down, like, a quarter of health. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? That should have <laughs> been an instant KO. But, uh... Like, yeah, mainly nitpicking and... There, what I do like is... I know it's like a little mon- little uh, minor feature, but it doesn't take fucking 15 minutes to save your game. Oh yeah, that's a good improvement there too. Yeah, I was like, do you want to save the game? Think yes. <laughs> So-and-so has saved the game. I was like, thank you. Finally, I don't have to go through a fucking menu prop to save the damn game. I was like, are you sure you want to save? Yes. Why the fuck would I sit? Why the fuck would I save if I didn't want to save it? Save. He's like, are you sure? He's like, saving a lot of data. Okay. Hey. 
there's a what? Someone uh, finally, two minutes later, someone's gonna save the game. I was like, God, this the save feature I, I enjoy. Plus, um, they introduced a new uh, way to. I think it's uh, give your Pokemon like IVs or boost up your EV or whatever it is. IVs like fours or something like that. There's fours. There's EVs. I think you're talking about. I think it's values. the yeah the effort values and it was like. Okay, cool. And I see my Venusaur's punching a punching bag. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, like, yeah, the, what would have been better if I was doing that whole uh, part where I had to target that stupid balloon? And instead of throwing soccer balls at it, it just did razor leaves. Oh, really? Yeah, no, I'm saying that would have been better. That'd oh, been that cool. would have been better. Yeah, that would have been cool. Like, um,. Like for Pikachu, yeah, Pikachu's like using like thunder shocks or yeah, thunder shock to fucking aim at the balloons area. But that part's really cool. Um, I don't really know how to like uh, how to deflect that the giant balloon soccer ball. You actually hit L, I think. Really? You gotta hit it like I think it's either L or R, and you gotta hit it like just right and stuff because a little shield will come up and actually block. The ball from hitting you. It recharges oh, see, like after use too. So, see, I could have known that. That would that would have been nice to know. But it seems like this is the only real uh, Pokemon game where I need a strategy guy because, like, the map is pretty fucking huge. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I agree. I love it. The map is pretty <laughs> fucking huge. It's not like a city to city. There's a gym in every fucking city. It's like I can, I've gone. Uh, three cities uh-huh. and have ran into a fucking gym yet for the third yeah. one. I was like... Yeah, like, I'm 14 hours in I just got my third one. Third badge. So, I think, like, if you played, like... So, if... I guess I'll jump in now. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, um, I'll, I, I'm a little, I was a little worried about this game coming up when I was kind of releasing, come getting closer and closer to the release date. Uh, that I haven't played... Pokemon games since Gold and Silver, and that was like 98, 99? 2001. And... Was it 2000? Yeah, 2001. Okay. So, like, two... Alright, so, 12, you know, 12 years. And... I was worried it was... Maybe it was nostalgic for me. It was... Did I build, like... I know I played these games a lot. Like, I probably put a couple hundred hours combined in these games. But maybe it was... It was really great because I was a kid. Because there's other... You know, I played a lot of other games that were great when I was younger. And I play them... You know, a few years later, and they weren't they're like, oh, wow, this was not nearly as good as I thought it was. Or things are so much more advanced now that they just, you know, they don't, they're not as good as they once were. But this is living up to all of my hopes and dreams and, and more of what I was hoping for this game. Um, the, I, I, I am addicted. So I picked it up after work Saturday. And I didn't get to play it much because I went out with some friends. Played Frisbee golf, Knuckles. <laughs> and, um... And I got home, uh, you know, I only played it for like an hour before that. Oh, for real and, quick, I don't even know why that thing was directed to me. I have no real problem against Frisbee cause Golf. Because last week you made fun of me because I went to play Frisbee Golf. So, anyways. I so think I was I, giving I, you I, crap about not playing GTA. <laughs> well, that too. You give me crap for a lot of things. But, so, uh, so I got home Saturday Saturday evening. like, and, uh, I wasn't feeling too well. I had a bit of a stomach ache. I ate Taco Bell. So, <laughs> as, is, as is the case. And I wasn't feeling too much having trouble, trouble sleeping. So I stayed up till 5.30 in the morning <laughs> and played party freaking Pokemon. I haven't stayed up. I, I don't stay up past midnight anymore, even on like a Friday or Saturday night when I don't have to go to work in the morning and play video games. Well, rarely ever, unless I'm playing games with friends. But if I'm playing by myself, never happens anymore. I'm getting a little old. I don't do that much. So I stay, yeah, I stay up till 5.30 in the morning and sat there and freaking played that game. And then... um. So that yeah, so I put I put quite a bit in this game. I'm like I said, I'm 14 hours in. I haven't played today because I spent the whole fucking day playing Beyond Two Souls. <laughs> um, so, so that was kind of a waste of uh, one day off. And so, but no, overall, I I I am really enjoying this game. I I, I just love. I, I'm not I'm not gonna be I'm not the guys can go out and catch all the Pokemon and whatever or try to see them all or do it like get all my max all my characters out. See, to you, all right, real quick. Uh, don't mean to cut you off, but. 
And that's another little thing is like you actually get experience points for catching the Pokemon. Yeah, that's really cool. Huge, cause, I love that. Because that was always yeah, that's great. And then I love they have the experience share you get after I think after you beat the first or second badge, or you beat you win the first or second badge. Okay. Where, so you get you get the experience. It's called the experience share. You can turn it off or on depending on how hardcore you want to go with this. So it's just it used to be that if you wanted your Pokemon to experience. In the battle, they had to be in the battle. So you, what you had to do if you had a weak Pokemon, you wanted to get them leveled up real quick. You made them, you made them go out first, and then you would immediately recall them and bring out your strong one, and that's, kind of put that's you without their experience share. Yeah, I'm talking about an older game. Oh, that was, and that now, was uh, without the experience share in the older games. Yeah, without now with the, this experience share in this game, they um, so. So you can just all your Pokemon get experience after the battle, or after every Pokemon you beat. So the, the characters that were in the battle get, you know, they, they get they half split of it. the total experience. Yeah, they get half the total experience. So all the even the ones that weren't in battle get half the experience, which is great. So like I I don't it cuts down a lot of the grinding, and a lot of my Pokemon are stronger. I'm actually going to because I used to like when I was playing it when I was younger, I'd always have like my my starter Pokemon was always like ten levels higher than everybody else because of that. Uh huh. And now they're all now all my Pokemon are like mid to high thirties right now, hmm. and these are all Pokemon I actually all but one I caught before or I caught like bef- like right in the beginning of the game, and I'm actually raising them all up. I've had like the same five Pokemon. And I always have a six guy. I just kind of switch out for whoever has a, you know just who I don't have that type of Pokemon. And my my six I always have him so. So that's pretty cool. Like I'm really enjoying it. So overall, I, like I said, I'm I'm loving. It. I don't grind. I don't like grinding in games anymore, really. <laughs> and I am spending a lot of time grinding. Um, <laughs> overall, I gotta say it's great. I don't. I, you know, Knuckles took a shot at me because I played 15 hours of GTA and got bored of it. Yeah. I'm not gonna get bored of Pokemon X because it's actually a fun game. So, <laughs> uh, Jack, why don't you go ahead and tell us what you think? I know you haven't got as much time into it, but go ahead. All right, as of now, I'm about 10 hours and around 48 minutes inside Pokemon X. I just got it, like, around Monday. Round about. R- around 10 hours and 48 yeah. minutes. Not exact. Yeah, not exact, though. Just around I'm at even 30 hours right now. <laughs> but anyway, I, my thoughts... Yeah, I'm of, still stronger than you. Oh, I'm sorry, Knuckles. My thoughts about Pokemon X and Y so far... I'm really loving it. I'm loving the little detailed things that they've added in. I love the aspect that I can earn experience now from not only catching Pokemon, but also for, like, uh, with the experience share. I mean, in older games, I said, like, the old Pokemon Gold and Silver, it was, the experience share was a held item. Now it's just more of a toggle inside X and Y, which, if you're going to be trying to get an evenly balanced level team, okay, you're going to, you're going to have... Maybe toggle it off or something if you want to try to individual, like, uh, levels to get up to balance. But for, say, if you go to a certain area and you have a member of your Pokemon team that can't go through or doesn't do well in a specific area, like, say, a Fire-type can't uh, go through this area because there's a bunch of trainers that are using Water-type Pokemon, flip on the Experience Share, go ahead and uh, have them be, like, at the bottom of your party, and just go ahead in a certain area and he'll earn, earn experience points. That's an awesome aspect that I like. Another aspect that I do like is the whole super training aspect. Because let me tell you, inside the competitive Pokemon stuff, because I've actually delved a lot inside of competitive like uh, Pokemon things, like doing EV stuff, like not not necessarily like counting fours or whatsoever, but especially back in like uh, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, I spent a lot of the time hatching eggs in the right natures, like uh, grinding on specific Pokemon to get like attack EVs, defense EVs, so on and so forth. So if with this whole super training aspect, it eliminates a lot of the repetitive grinding that you had to have done inside the past previous games in order to get your Pokemon stronger. So in case for this, it's replaced by a bunch of these mini games that are like corresponding to their specific stat things like health, defense, special defense, speed, attack, so on and so forth. So for that, it's easy. It's easier to do because the aspect about it is a little bit more fun. Where every time you complete a mini game, you earn a specific amount of like uh, EV stat increases. So for let's put this into perspective here. For every four EVs you get, you get like one stat increase, like by one. So let's say if you use like a bunch of super training things on a specific mini game, if you do it like a couple of times, it'll go up 
every, you know, like, by four each time, or by four each time, or... Especially if you, like, earn, like, specific items, like, say, like, punching bags, that also help boost the EV stat, like, even more. And you could do things like, say, like, earn, like, about plus 12 to a certain stat, or, like, uh, plus 24 to another one, if you're working on that specific area of a, of a creature. There's also a little mini game. There's also another aspect where you can actually get Pokemon to be a lot more friendlier by, say, like, playing specific mini games. Let's say, like, uh, like matching berries or something like that. Or even, it's kind of like a Nintendo aspect where you can actually pet your Pokemon as well. It's just, it's just the whole thing regarding, like, uh, uh, I was like, I think it's pretty funny. I uh, found that where your Pokemon doesn't like to be petted. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that is... you that weird, like, evil growl on his face. I was like, oh, okay, back <laughs> off, go back to the tummy. Get away from the ears. <laughs> get away from, yeah, get away from the ears. <laughs> I haven't encountered that yet, but that sounds absolutely funny. But you can also feed, like, feed them like uh, Pokey Puffs or something like that, where every time you go and finish like a complete like mini game, you earn these specific Pokey Puffs. So each time you feed them those corresponding little things, they get they get more friendlier towards you and stuff. So, for instance, if you're working on a Pokemon, like say like uh, oh gosh, what's a good Pokemon that generally? Oh, let's say a Togepi. Let's say you get a Togepi, and the only way it can evolve is by well being more friendlier towards you. And if you get like the maximum friendship, it'll start to evolve. So by doing this mini game a couple dozen times it will actually make the Pokemon evolve much more quicker. So you might have the possibility of having, say, a Togi, like a Togetic or something like that in the, like at least a couple of levels, or maybe even a Togekiss by level 20, you know? that It's just uh, that uh, effective. But getting away from the whole, like, minigame aspect, the whole general game stuff I really like because it's a lot more faster, the beginning part of the game especially. In the older yes. Pokemon games, it took you maybe about a half an hour, at sometimes at maximum, to not only get your Pokemon, get your Pokedex, like, uh, finish what other type of damn errands that the professor wanted you to do, and then finally get off to your adventure. I would say, like, around the first ten, like, five or ten minutes, I not only had my starter, but I was on my way and catching specific Pokemon that I, exactly for my party. Thing, yep. So, in terms of, like, uh... Where I'm at right now, I am just past the first gym, which, you know what, the first gym is pretty easy, <laughs> but uh, what I'm really liking, I kind of like the horde elements and stuff like that for, there are specific, <sighs> there are specific parts where you can encounter like wild Pokemon that they come across as like an eventual horde, which if, say, you have a move that can hit multiple targets instead of like just one on one. It makes it a lot easier. But uh, for the element of the Horde thing, I find that it's it's really good if you are testing to see which Pokemon can actually sustain like a particular type of damage, like physical or special type of attacks. Or for, say, it also presents more of an element, say, if you want to try to get shiny Pokemon. Because, let's face it here, if in the past games, even like to this game as well, encountering a shiny Pokemon is like 1 in 8,000 and something. So... If you're counting a horde of Pokemon and all of a sudden one of them's shiny, it's like, okay, you gotta you gotta somehow capture that one without uh, screwing yourself over. <laughs> but it also can be annoying as well because let's say for instance that you're facing off against a horde of like uh, Scraggy or something like that, and they're using like a particular move, or even in Ginger Boy's case where he was facing off a horde of Mime Junior that were using Encore and uh, Reflect. <laughs> Fuckers. <laughs> It could be really annoying because, especially, especially if you're trying to capture one Pokemon and you keep using moves where you're just eliminating all of them. <laughs> but other than that, I am really liking the new Pokemon that they've put inside this game. I mean, yes, there's a lot of familiar ones, but I'm I'm really really liking the design of the newer creatures. They say like uh, the starters, for instance, like Cespin, Froakie. Fennekin, they looked really cool, especially when they start to evolve and stuff like that. Let's see, I started off with Cespin, and uh, I'm I'm really <laughs> I'm really happy with uh, what uh, I've gotten so far because right now, you know, he's already evolved. He's like at level that eighteen. That thing looks like a giant fucking tank when it's fully evolved. 
I know, yeah. that's why I gave him the nickname of Bowser, because his final evolution <laughs> kind of looks like Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> it does. So, so, so what, what, why, did you, why did you go with him? I went with him, not only because you guys started, started with like particular other things, but I like the final form of him, and I just wanted to uh, start off with a grass type. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, because I, I went with, uh, I remember uh, you asked me off the air who I was going with, and I said Fennekin. Uh-huh. And I went with uh, the, the fro- Frogan. Froken? Froki. <laughs> Froki, whatever. Yeah, I went with him. So, I lied. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, freaking uh, Jacob went with Fennekin, I think. <laughs> yeah, I went with Fennekin, and I named mine, uh, I nicknamed mine Firefox. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Any nicknames from me? I, um, <laughs> who'd you get for the second starter? You're talking about me or uh, Jack? Oh. Either one of you. I got Bulbasaur. Oh, cool. You, who'd you go with, Jack? I went with Squirtle. <laughs> oh, nice. I went Charmander. <laughs> Dude, that's just crazy. I nicknamed yeah. my uh, Squirtle Blue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't nickname a Pokemon. I just leave him as is. I but No, I, uh, no, I, the only reason I, I actually, I prefer Squirtle, like, as far as, like, their original forms, but I've always preferred, I figured I'm probably going to spend more time with them as their evolved forms. I always like Charizard more, so... Plus, because uh, you have the Mega Evolutions now, I like um, Charizard's better. See, what I didn't like is that Charizard, like, some of the Pokemon's Mega Form varied on what version of the game you had. I was like, yeah, that's not cool. Well, I understand <laughs> why they did it, though. though because they people were gonna people were going to buy both. Yep. Jack. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. You know what, exactly what I did is... Uh, <laughs> I know I'm going to get some shit for this, but I traded in GTA 5, and I got both Pokemon X and Y. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> so here's funny. Here's a funny thing. Uh, Jackson, or Knuckles is going to kill us. But um, what's funny is, so I bought GTA 5 with, so when I traded over at G, when I traded in a bunch of games, I pre-ordered Watch Dogs, um, and I got like an extra 30% uh, trade-in bonus because I'm like, I have a, from a, the pro gamer, the fifteen dollars a year thing, so you get an extra ten percent when you trade in. Mm-hmm. Plus, I got an extra twenty percent because I pre-ordered a game, so I got like fifty bucks for that. I bought I, I bought GTA with that, turned around, sold GTA, got an extra thirty percent for trading it in to get Pokemon. Wow! And I got, I got forty dollars for it. So wow! I actually I think I, I actually made money off GTA. Actually, all right, I, I I pretty much got Pokemon, uh, Super Mario Land 3D, and GTA 5 all for free. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty awesome. But speaking of watchdogs, yeah. Speaking of watchdogs, there's a. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm chewing something for the moment. Speaking of watchdogs, there is some interesting news and tidbits that have come out about it during the week. Watchdogs and the crew have been delayed a few months. Now, <sighs> I'll tell you what. I saw this article and immediately I thought. Oh man, Tyler is just gonna really be feeling disappointed by this. <laughs> <laughs> yep, because that was the one game for the rest of the year I for sure was gonna buy. Like I even had it, I even have it pre-ordered. I oh, oh. <laughs> See, it really sucks. I, but I didn't really it, get excited for that game just because they announced it. Like and it just it's, they announced it back in like 2010. Yeah. No, they announced it last year. Oh yeah. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm sure announced? they announced it like. Yeah, but they didn't. We didn't see any video for the game until last D3. Yeah. Well. So. Wait. 2011. Was, uh... It was 2011, I think. Was it 2011? I thought it was 2012. Because they had Anyways. they had Watchdog promotions at PAX East 2012, and I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, promotions. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Which was last year, so it came. Yeah, last year. Anyways, go on. <laughs> well, anyway, well, anyway, you know what? I am very, you know, I am kind of happy that Watch Dogs was delayed because for the rest of this year, I'm pretty much filled up with uh, the games that uh, I want to play. Because when it comes to like my more most anticipated games, I'm just looking forward to not only playing the the Zelda 3DS game that's coming out, but also super, like Mario 3D World and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I wouldn't have time and- for it. That's actually, that's what's nice. Like it was kind of sucks to actually have like that week after Watch Dogs comes out off, 
And so it's kind of, I mean, I didn't take it off for that reason, but I had just so had a week off. But I was pretty excited. Like, oh, cool, I'm a really great game to play. It's going to be a long game to play. Now it's not coming out, so, but it kind of frees up. I'm going to take that pre-order now. I'm just going to get Zelda Link Between Worlds uh, on 3DS, which actually came out on the 22nd, three days, mm-hmm. uh, four days after Watch Dogs. So I, I, I'm up, it sucks because that was like my most anticipated game for the, like the rest of the year. And it's not, you know, it's not coming out, so that sucks. But it kind of makes that, that decision and I'm not, you know, decision easier for me so I can get Zelda now because I wasn't able to get both. Now I can get Zelda. And I'm sure I'm going to enjoy Zelda quite a bit. So I'm not like, it's not, a, it, you know, Watch Dogs is basically a lot of hype right now. Zelda, we know what Zelda is. They're all great. Yep. So it's not like, you know, I'm going from, uh, you know, this great game to not having nothing now right you know it's i'm going from watch dog a game that i was really hyped for but i don't know how good this game is going to be to zelda you're gonna put 15 which... hours into it and then quit playing it wow <laughs> jeez i play i i put 15 hours in the one game i did not like and now i don't play games i, I quit after playing as i have beat... unless it's a football unless it's a ncaa game oh my god do we really i got a, i got a list i can i can pull out right now and it has all the games i've beaten ncaa game Finally. or call of duty game no no i i have beat tomb raider crisis 3 uh bioshock infinite last of us beyond two souls saints row 4 uh what else have i beaten this year i beat uh, did Sleeping you beat saints row 4 yeah binary domain I, I, of all the games I have bought that have come out this year, all the games I bought this year, I have beat all of them that are able to beat besides college football, obviously, except for Grand Theft Auto V. That is the only game I have purchased this year that I haven't beat. Well, and Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> it's kind of the back burner. I, I actually started playing through it uh, again uh, throughout the week, last week, and then Pokemon came out. So it got put back in the back burner. But, no, I, I have beaten... Every game I have purchased this year, except for two. One I'm really enjoying, but there's other games I enjoy more right now. GTA V, eh. <laughs> well, you know what? Speaking of GTA V, you know that... Thank you for you the know segue! That, uh, I'm yes! so glad I, I can make... Uh, I was so glad I could make it mad. And I was like, <laughs> come on, please. Please be able to pull it off. Uh, <laughs> dude, if, I was waiting for you to respond, because it was about to be on. I was going to make you rage quit. <laughs> no, I was like, please. Well, please anyway, enough jokes, as, enough jokes aside right here. It's Apparently, Rockstar is giving everybody $500,000 for GTA V online as sort of like an apology for, oh, hey, we apologize for the fuck-up. That was our launch. You know? We'll see. Like, uh, I guess I'll take a, take control over this since neither of you play the damn game. <laughs> But, uh, we're usually like, we all like to play good games. Yeah. I don't know. So I go to, I look at it and see 10 out of 10. And I was like, yep, well, everywhere. But That's uh, what happens when people, when you pay people to review your games. <clears throat> Boom. I'm just going to make Knuckles mad now. <laughs> but uh, what they're really uh, doing is like, I think... Uh, they're giving away a total of five hundred thousand to each player. Yeah. But from what I tell, it looks like they're actually giving giving it to giving two deposits of uh, yeah two hundred fifty two hundred fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. And it looks like a it's for each character you get two hundred fifty thousand. So I was like, but I could be wrong. It could be a total of five hundred thousand. I think what I, I, I've read an article, and I could be wrong, uh, but I think it said that they're going to give you two fifty now, and then later on they're going to give you like I think like a week or two later they're going to give you another two hundred fifty thousand. Just that way they don't break the game, I guess. We'll see. If really, I play the game, and it's like the highest apartment is four hundred thousand. So there, okay. there's a huge chunk. There's that huge chunk of that money gone. In I mean, but, I'll uh, say that it's that's really cool. Of them, I'm as someone that I was, you know, I had the game when it first when the online first launched, and it sucked. It didn't work at first, but I think we all knew it, and even they said it wasn't going to work at first. Yeah, and it was so like I, if you didn't expect it to have troubles the first couple of days of launch, you're an idiot. 
Right, if yeah, you know, really. well, I mean, if you if you know if you know about your video games and video game news, like we, that you know about Th- Diablo three and SimCity five and their issues, you know it was gonna have issues, especially yep. when you got seventeen million people want to get on the exact same time in one day. I mean, they, it was all expected. Um, I think it's really cool of them to do that. I, they don't. I don't think they needed to do that. No. I think that I think everybody that um. I don't think I don't don't know if there's a lot of people that were really super upset about it. Like, I'm I I can understand why people are upset about SimCity Five or Diablo Three having their issues. Yeah. Because those are games you can only play online. This game has a whole you could put a hundred hours into the single player, and you don't have to be online to play. You could be offline, and a lot of people are enjoying that. And I, I so I don't think I don't think that's why there wasn't the big backlash on Rockstar. Maybe there was. I just we didn't see it. It was a lot of uh, stupid kids that were in the game itself playing. Were yeah. Yep. Off. It so, was like, oh no, I lost my character. Guess I'm going to have to put more hours into this game. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I can... It was like, okay, you defeat the purpose of getting mad because you went back to the game. Yeah. It's like, so... I actually tell this to the kids a lot. It's like, damn, I lost a fucking little 15 character. I was like, okay, so... Like your point is, you're playing the game now and your character's level 20. Yeah. It's like, you put way more time into this game because you lost that yeah. character. It's still, it's still frustrating, though, that you lost all that time and put it to a character. But oh. I, don't, I, I just I, I just think that it's something they didn't have to do. And I think it's really cool. To do. And they're going to lose a lot of money off this because they have the, um, the thing where you can... They have the... Oh, God, what's it called? You can buy money in the that, game with that, money. That system isn't up yet. Well, it will be up, and I think, I mean, they were going to probably make a bunch of money off that, mm-hmm. and I think this is going to hurt I me. Mean, it might... No, five, might. like I said earlier, it's like the ho- the biggest apartment is uh, 400,000 cars in the game. It is fucking up to, it's over a million. It was oh like, my god. It, yeah, it's like... That five hundred thousand will go away instantly, especially when you have that two hundred, yeah. that two thousand uh, dollar death respawn. That's it's like that five hundred k will go away, no problem. That's true for the hardcore ones that want to get all the nice stuff and pimp out everything. It, that, that, I'm sure they're probably still going to buy the, buy a lot of stuff. But I've, I think I've for earned people that are going to do more casually. It's you know that's hey that's awesome. And I can get, I can get better weapons and better stuff right off the bat. In that game, I've earned a total of like over. Um, a hundred point uh, one point seven five million. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I've spent one point uh, seven four million. Jeez, <laughs> man! For like, every, like for what exactly? Like just for different weapons, different vehicles, different stuff weapons, like that. ammo's fucking expensive. Fucking uh, your house. I've bought a two hundred. He dies a lot. Yeah, you do die a lot, especially <laughs> when you're playing with dickheads. Yeah, which is the entire internet. So. Well, there's some like lo- 90% there's some internet. lobbies you can get into. And people are pretty cool, but when you steal a car from an NPC and they put a fucking five thousand dollar bounty on your head, everyone oh goes God, fucking yeah. insane. You know what? That's one of the beefs that I did have with GTA Online for how little I played it and stuff. It's like there were just specific things, either like players putting bounties on your head or like uh, even to a like, certain I thought extent. The whole when... Players putting bounties bounties on each other was cool, but I don't like the concept of this guy I killed calling me later. He's like, you're fucking dead. And then I see a $9,000 bounty. I was like, I fucking killed you. You're an NPC. You're dead. You don't exist anymore. <laughs> like, there's no way you could be calling me. No, that, that was my main issue with the online was, but, like, if you you had your card, but if you died or got arrested, it goes to the impound. And when you respawn, you could be halfway, you could be on the other side of the map so you either get a cab, which is I mean I get you can get a cab and it costs a little bit of money, or if you want to, but if you stole a car, you automatically got a one star rating. And I spent like ninety percent of the time being chased by cops, which is not very fun. I just want to go play golf or something. So, <laughs> it was funny because the most fun I had playing that game, playing online, was playing the golf. But but is, <laughs> you you didn't get to the part where you can like call mercenaries on random character on like people playing it, so yeah. someone's being a dickhead to you. He's like, all right, seven thousand dollars. I'm gonna call a mercenary group to take out this player, and there's no satisfaction to it at all. You don't get any reward for doing it. He's like, he's like, all right, you've placed a mercenary on so and so's head. 
And I was like, okay, cool. Five minutes later, you get a phone call. It's like, the hit has been successful. Thank you for calling Merriweather. <laughs> and it doesn't know. It's like, so-and-so has been killed by mercenaries. That's all it says. And it's like, then you just start busting out laughing. And then people find out you're the asshole that calls the mercenaries on that guy. <laughs> and I was like, it's just so rewarding for nothing. I was like, okay, you can't kill him, so they're just going to send a small group of NPCs to kill him. Well, and anyway, just getting a little, like... just getting a little bit back on like a, another topic here. Well, apparently, the Wii U sales are up about six hundred and eighty-five percent in the UK. Am I reading this correctly here? Yes, yes, it is. Um, the week, I think it, I, I can't remember exactly when, but like, I think it was the week after. Um, Wind Waker HD release in in the UK mm -hmm. sales went up 685%. Huh. I'm and glad that, a 10 year old game could uh, promote a new console. Hey, that game is fantastic and it's still fantastic, okay? You shut your mouth. <laughs> well, it just comes I'll, to show that I'll no matter what you. type of uh, game, either. As new long as you release even... a Zelda game, Pokemon oh, yeah. game, or what, people will buy your console. That, but that's that shows how great Nintendo's franchises are to me, is that it's it, I mean like they're, they're exclusive titles like the Zeldas and the Mario's and the Metroids and the Pokemon of the world. It's like that a ten year old game they just HD remade and they did make some changes to the game that make it a lot better and streamline some stuff. Um, but overall, it's you know it's Wind Waker and a ten year old game that which is fantastic, one of my favorite games of all time. It's it's the sales went up 700 percent almost like that to show that i mean that that gives me hope that maybe there's some hope in it that gives me hope like, gives me hope that there's hope <laughs> it gives me hope that there's hope for this hope that comes but up. i'm hoping with this that maybe the wii u can be maybe not you know as groundbreaking successful as the wii but it will it'll be profitable and it won't be a big loss to nintendo and maybe they can come back from this, and maybe they'll come out strong next gen. You know, I know it's one game; it's a, it, over a long. It's one week out of a five, six, seven year life cycle. But I don't know. Like with this, it just I, I'm hopeful that this is the beginning of something. Maybe they'll get some momentum with this. They got some real, a lot of really good games coming out here in the next six to eight months, maybe this is the beginning of something big. Maybe this is the getting the ball rolling downhill. Well, you know what? Here's the, here's the perspective that, I've, uh, that I have during this whole thing and stuff. You know, with uh, Nintendo, the Wii U and stuff, it really reminds me a lot of when the 3DS first launched and how slow that was until it progressively picked up steam. I, it's just almost ironic that the Wii U is kind of like the... It's starting to become kind of the same way. The Wii mm -hmm. had a year... Ahead of the, the PS4, the Xbox One, they squandered a lot of it, and there was like very little like good games that were releasing from month in to month out. But you go forth right now. I mean, right now would it, is like really the perfect time to really buy a Wii U because not only do you have the Legend of Zelda: The Wind Waker HD, but you also have other games that are really good that people could get probably for a little bit cheaper or whatever. You got good games like. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, you got the Wonderful 101, you got games coming on the horizon like, say, Sonic Lost World, which kind of, it really looks fantastic to me, since it's like a Super Mario Galaxy kind of-ish type of game, only with Sonic, and uh, you have Super Mario 3D World, it's like, I'm counting upon, I looked at a lot of the Wii U games that I was checking out on like a Metacritic and even on IGN and stuff, or just checking out to see what type of stuff I was interested in. The number of games that I'm interested in playing on the Wii U count at like around 10 to about 14 that I really just want to go and just play because there's a lot of interest right here. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking that this is starting to become like a momentum type of thing where Nintendo, they're having a lot of their big name games and stuff like that come out towards the beginning of uh, part of next year. You know, it's like, okay, they got Super Mario 3D World in December. Then I'm not too sure what's gonna go on in January and February, but you gotta make, but you gotta <laughs> realize though that during the springtime you have Smash Brothers and you have Mario Kart 8. Those are two potential. And league. Donkey Kong is coming out. Donkey Kong comes out in February. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze comes out in February. Those three games, especially Smash Brothers and Mario Kart 8, are system sellers. 
those are the mm -hmm. reasons why people get the Nintendo systems, because those are franchises that can not only drive system sales up, but it's, they can also they also have the most longevity. I mean, look at Mario Kart Wii, look at Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Those two games were on the selling like the MPD charts for months, and not just months, but just years after the Wii re like was still, you know, selling more so than all the other consoles. Yeah, well, like to go even farther back, I remember I used to I had a Nintendo Power subscription for years, and every month, every issue, every when it was a monthly one. It, did, it had the top 10 uh, Game Boy Vans or DS, whatever the, the handheld at that time was, and GameCube games. Uh -huh. And it would tell you the top 10 selling games of the month. And every month for like, it was like they talked about for like, it was like 80 something months, Super Smash Brothers Melee was one, one of the top 10 selling games. Yeah. So that tells you something. I mean, that those, I, I think, and then uh, to piggyback on this. Uh, Nintendo released, I think, just I, a couple days ago, maybe maybe it was today or last night. They said that there have they they're going to have a lot of stuff to talk about, but the new Zelda game at E3 2014. I know it's a ways out. Oh yeah, but Anuma actually went that could on be record with that saying they sort of yeah, so, more information about it. Yeah, so I'm thinking, I mean, that might be something that might be their big game of the holiday season next next winter, or it could be the next the big game for next spring. So maybe they, I'm hoping that maybe this isn't just like a you know, that this isn't like a good stretch of maybe like six to eight months where all these great games are coming out. And maybe they can keep this going for a good year and a half to two years. Well, you and yeah. keep. I don't think they're, they're not going to, they're not, I don't get me wrong, I don't, they're not going to, when PS4 and Xbox One come out, they're going to blow them out of the water. And they're, they're, they're going to, Wii U is going to be third, a distance third, I think, unless one of those two consoles just bomb, which I don't see it happening. But. I th hopefully they can be somewhat successful and, like I said, make money and maybe they'll learn some lessons with this one, like they did with the Wii, and get you know do get a better jump start in these games because, like you said, with the 3DS, it, like the first year it was out. Yeah. I mean, nobody bought it, and then they did a price drop, and they had they had a good stretch of a bunch of good games come out, and then and then now we get the X and Y just came out this this pack this past weekend, and now and then it's one it's a great it's a really well i don't know i mean it sold millions and millions of uh, uh consoles i mean the, the pokemon x and y on saturday the day it launched sold over five million copies that is huge for a handheld yeah the most couple most days, yeah. there's a lot of triple a titles on xbox 360 and freaking ps3 they don't hit five million sold I mean, like, you look at, like, get, like, maybe 500,000, maybe 700,000 at most for those. Yeah, I mean, stretches. like, the Uncharted games, I think they only sold, like, two or three million. In the, like, it's still a lot in the first day, but they sold two or three million. And that's a big budget game that's 100, that has, like, a $100 million budget. This game probably had a third of that, if that even. And it sold, outsold freaking un the Uncharted games and all, a lot of big games. I only think Gears of War sold that many games. I mean, I don't know. Well, the point, I just think that, that Nintendo, Nintendo is not going, not going out without, a, without, a, you know, not, they're, they're going to throw some punches before they go down. Well, the point, they're going down swinging. That's all I want to say. You know, as far as like Nintendo goes, I don't expect them to really like focus upon, okay, we're going to go and just uh, try to be number one with this and that, because that's not Nintendo's style. They're more or less of uh, an old timely type of company and stuff that really sticks to what they know works well. And that's had them a lot of success in, like, the old, you know, back in the day, you know, with the NES, Super Nintendo. I see the Wii U doing a little bit better than the GameCube. But at the same time, I see it having, like, the type of uh, great games, even a little bit more so than what the GameCube had. I still think, yeah, I know it's probably not going to do as well as the Wii, which, you know what, the Wii was just really a freak of nature when it came to selling stuff because it yeah. selling a whole bunch of different demographics and stuff. But... What I am really just uh, seeing here is uh, you have like a bunch of, uh, you just have a lot of potential like hits coming out in the next year, especially some that might not sell well, may sell well, may sell all right. I still think that Bayonetta 2 is going to be a sleeper hit for like uh, the Wii U when it comes out next year. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, other than that, you never count Nintendo out of anything because you, you might expect them like to have months where they have dry spells. I mean, they've had that since like the N64 generation. Yeah, so, that's their M.O. That's uh, their M.O. Uh, real quick. But, okay. What was y'all's 
What was your favorite game to play across all of Nintendo's consoles? Like, you're talking franchise or The entire actual, franchise. Like, like system-wise, not the handhelds. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Jack. I'm, I'm going to think about this one. Okay, so you mean, like, across, like, the NES, Super Nintendo, like, GameCube, all those consoles? Yeah. Well, you know what? To this day, my favorite <laughs> my favorite game has been Super Mario Bros. 3 across all the consoles. And that's putting into perspective that I've played through plenty of the like other console games that are supposedly the great ones, you know, like Super Metroid, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, like uh, there's Donkey Kong Country games, all those. But uh, the reason why I see Super Mario Brothers 3, it's because that's the first game that I actually remember seeing being played by my family, and also it was the first game that I actually had a chance to play through and beat. <laughs> well, actually, no. I didn't beat that first. It was Super Mario World. <laughs> Tyler, how about you? Um, I guess if we're going franchise, it's Zelda. But if we're going to go individual game, uh, I've got to go with uh, GameCube's Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Really? You really like that one, huh? I love that game. I, I Oh, man, I was hopelessly... I, I think I beat that game like four times. Well, I kid you not, back in the day when that released, when I got that game, I would read... During high school, during our like advisory period, I would read that player's guide like from top to bottom because that thing I loved the Thousand Year Door. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that game that game was game was fantastic. I, I think I can go back and play that game right now. Well, anyway, one last but... one last thing to say about like uh, the whole Wii thing before we move on to our last topic here is uh, you know what Pokemon X and Y that's pretty much going to make up the entirety of uh, like the Nintendo's holiday like. Uh, forecast here along with zelda yeah. along with the 2ds they're gonna have huh. a good successful <laughs> fucking like uh holiday season <laughs> yeah I, I yeah yeah i think they're gonna do fine especially right now i think it was you know with pokemon is coming out right before the consoles come out so hopefully zelda doesn't get you know buried in all the, the new console stuff but no like i said N nintendo nintendo's they're gonna go out if they're gonna go out they're gonna go out swinging and I don't know, maybe they'll get a couple shots in on the big Microsoft and Sony. Okay, well... Knuckles, do you have anything to say about this? Yeah, really. Uh, it's, um, been, it's been really quiet. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm not a fan of the Wii U, and Wind Waker I wasn't a fan of, even back on the GameCube, so... I, like, mm. I don't really want to say anything negative, so I'm just going to keep my mouth shut about that. No, well, well, anyway... But, um... <laughs> Uh, I didn't really tell you what my favorite game was. Okay. It, what, it wasn't exclusive. Like, but I did play it on the, but I did only play it on the Super Nintendo. Yeah. It was the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, uh, Streets of Rage-esque game. Oh my god. <laughs> the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the beat-em-up thing what you're that doing was like here. Double Dragon. I know what you're doing yeah, here. Yeah, it was a stretch of rage. Uh, I I know what you're doing here. You're trying to do Well, something. you know what? But let me let, Speaking before, of Power Rangers. I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> but Streets of Rage is the best Streets of Rage game of all time. Yeah. Go on. Actually, do you, do you actually own the Streets of Rage arcade game on the Xbox? I own all, th I own all three of them. Are you kidding me? Okay. <laughs> but, uh... I love those games. I own them on the Wii, too. Wow. <laughs> I might, I might still have the, the original Sega Genesis ones laying around somewhere. I probably do too. But uh, that's not what you brought up that for though. So oh, no. Jack, Damn. do it because I'm not gonna say the hold word. Because if hold I say up. the word, hold up, real if quick. I say the word, what we're doing did, here? Did you? Did either of you play this game on on the Super Nintendo? Yes, I probably did. I did. I uh, still, real quick, I still play through it like once every couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So which was your favorite Power Ranger? Well, it's obviously it was obviously the Red Ranger because for Christ's sake, I always, the, I always like the black one. <laughs> I, I always like the black one. Zach, uh, well, the, the, the freaking dance moves that he would do, like before, yeah. like uh, defeating the putties. <laughs> I don't know. That was kind of racist back then, but it's so kind of well, like the pink one was also a woman, so that's kind of racist. Not so racist. was the racist? yellow one. But... What? <laughs> yeah, there were two women. But uh... <laughs> was he was he Asian or something? Ah, oh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Accidental racist. <laughs> get, get your get all your racist jokes now, kids, off the Junk Dash Nerds podcast. <laughs> well, but, anyway, uh, you know what? I you play know. either played. Uh, I think I played through that game with every character. Yeah, but I've probably did multiple playthroughs with either uh, Zach the Black Ranger or Billy. Oh yeah, <laughs> see the white one, the what blue, and it was like he. Like, throughout my entire game, he is like he does kicks, but most of the time his hands are in his pockets when he's kicking. <laughs> That's right! <laughs> his hands are in his pockets and stuff. He actually has a down crouch move where, like, he holds his head and he just kicks out and stuff. It's so totally awkward. And it kind of looks like when he's jumping that he has a bulge. <laughs> Only but, Jack uh, noticed that. I don't How can yeah, you not know. notice it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, for a random wrestler of the week, I might as well just go into something, you know, really niche. So I'm going to go ahead and say the niche wrestler of the week is Glacier. Now, who the hell is Glacier, <laughs> mind you? Well, you know, back in the 90s, the WCW had this type of idea because... They were watching what the kids were playing. They were playing mostly a game by the name of Mortal Kombat. I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but uh, the Mortal Kombat the was so popular that WCW had the idea, oh, hey, let's make a few character gimmicks surrounding like those characters. So obviously you had guys like Wrath and Mortis, which... Uh, Wrath, Mortis, I'm not too sure which characters they were based off, but you had this other character by the name of Glacier who was modeled after Sub-Zero. So, basically, you have this guy coming to the ring dressed up in full armor and attire with this ninja-like type of, like, uh, mask thing and, like, this samurai type of helmet or something. And uh, he would do all these type of, like, these, like, Muay Thai, or not Muay Thai, but, like, kind of like these uh, karate type of moves and, uh, like, high kicks and all this other crap. And, uh, basically, that was his gimmick and stuff. Like, he was, like, a, like a fast, like, agile martial artist and stuff that... Uh, could kick your ass and stuff like that and do this and do that. I think he may have had, like, maybe a couple of decent matches, but he was more or less... I would more or less remember him based upon his theme music and the way he would come to the ring more so than what he would do inside the ring. I don't even remember his damn signature move, and that's kind of really telling of a wrestler if you can't even tell what their signature move is. <laughs> Check the back of the PS3. Yeah. Mortal Kombat! I did not get the music stuck on my head. <laughs> I just want to go watch that movie. I hope it's on Netflix. I'm going to watch that tonight. <laughs> well, anything you guys want to say about Glacier before we get... This? No. Okay. No, we, we, we... I think we spent more... T you spent more time talking about them than WCW pushed them. Okay. So. Well, okay. Well, anyway, let's okay. go out to our other type of shoutouts here. Do we have any type of shoutouts on Twitter or Facebook? A random Twitter follower of the week. Knuckles. Oh, shit. We're still doing it? That was a one-time joke. Well, I figured we'd keep going. You don't have to do it. <laughs> we don't. don't do it. No, we don't. All right, I'm, on, I'm already on Twitter. Might as well. No, no, I got okay. it. I got oh, it. I got I'm it already here. I know. I got it. Let Knuckles do it. Oh, man. It's a shout-out and a F, <laughs> oh, shout out and a F here. This uh, Our random Twitter follower of the week is Taco Bell. Fuck Taco Bell. <laughs> Fuck you, Taco Bell. <laughs> okay, uh, can someone explain to me why they're why you guys have it in the show notes? F you, Taco Bell. <laughs> I have it because Good. like I went to Taco Bell like a couple nights ago after after work. Yeah. I, like I ordered that five dollar box, one of those five dollar box, try, maybe trying to get a chance to win the PS4. Yeah. And I ordered a sh shredded chicken burrito. And, uh, for the box, I said, no sour cream whatsoever. And the first thing I look, that Gordita Crunch, whatever. Yeah. I look at it, first thing I see is it's fucking loaded with sour cream. Oh, shit. And this is the third time they've done that to me. And I'm sick and tired of it. Second off, they gave me a coupon for a free fucking breakfast. <laughs> 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 so the Taco morning, Bell breakfast. Ew. Yeah, oh. it's like for free breakfast. Cool. Was you, like, you can have Taco Bell for breakfast. Taco Bell for lunch. Be dead by dinner. <laughs> right? So this morning, I was like, 
Uh, I, I'm up. I gotta go get my meds from Walgreens, so I'll go to the Taco Bell and get it. Give me a breakfast or whatnot. I got a free waffle taco, and I ordered a uh, one of those uh, AM Crunch wraps. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Well, I get home, eat it. And it's like the hash brown was like, you know, the hash brown's okay. Not as pretty crappy. But I go to bite into it. And I was like, this waffle tastes like fucking plastic. Because <laughs> it is. And I was like, God, it's fucking nasty. And then I threw it, threw it down into the bag. I was like, fuck this shit. It's like, if I, if I hadn't got that for free, I would have been pissed. <laughs> AM Crunchwrap. Not much better. It was still no. it was still better than the fucking waffle taco. Well, I just I I just hate Taco Bell because every time you eat there, you're, you're like sick for the next twenty four hours. <laughs> so. Did they actually give you like a game piece for the PS4? No, it was like they oh for they did for that box. I didn't really care. Well, you but, know what? Uh, I've had the issue with my Taco Bell because I got a couple of other stupid five dollar like buck boxes. Where they didn't even give me the right corresponding boxes. They gave me this freaking MTV bullshit. <laughs> so. I would have gone back here, like, threw the box out. I'm like, no, motherfuckers. I want the PS4 box. It's the only reason I come here. Because I hate your food. <laughs> you know, you're delicious. I know. I should have done that, too. Cause yeah, we, it's like, if you're not ordering a beef fucking burrito and a steak quesadilla, you're going to fuck your shit up. Hey. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. I always get the beefy nacho griller. Because here's, here's exactly. Like, or, uh, not just Supreme and it's take KCD and it's like how All right, hard we gotta stop talking Taco Bell. My stomach is like is like about to throw okay. up. Okay, anyway, one more thing. Fuck one off, more, Taco Bell. One more thing about Taco Bell before I said if it you like follow Taco oh. Bell, unfollow them. One thing I'll say about Taco Bell before we get on to finishing off this thing, it's like I go there I went there like about two days in a row to get those five dollar block boxes. They oh, did not give me any of those stupid PS4 things, even if they had the thing, they had it clearly advertised on their not only their freaking menu, but on the side of their goddamn building. Yep. That fucking pissed me off. So Did you uh, go through the drive-thru? Were you in? Yep. Going through the drive-thru. I ordered went in. It's like, what the fuck is this? I ordered this for the PS4. I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't give a fuck about no MTV bullshit. <laughs> I don't even like your food. I just want my PS4. No, I, I want to do a, I want to do a random Twitter follower of the week. Okay, do it. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pick randomly of the people that follow me. Okay, close the eyes. Scrolling. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to shout out this. He must. He's probably spam. Sam Wright. <laughs> Gee, um, <laughs> you think you gave him enough blowjobs this episode? Ah, uh, one more will do. <laughs> Okay. No, no, I just want to do it to annoy. Okay, Knuckles. well, let's just go ahead and conclude with our... Say goodbye, everybody. Life. This is the last time you'll see uh, Ginger Boy on the show. <laughs> it's the last time you hear the show because nobody will edit it. Well... I'll edit it. I'll do a fuck. Well, anyway, speaking of endings of show and stuff like that, why don't we conclude a little bit with our, our extra life dealy thing. <laughs> Knuckles, you want to take it away? Uh, I've talked enough this episode. Give it to the blowjob. <laughs> Tyler, what about oh, you? I'm sorry. I, <clears throat> I had a dick in my mouth. Um, anyways. Uh, no, so Extra Life. No way to really clean segue from a blowjob to <laughs> curing kid cancer. To redeem yourself <laughs> from being the shame of the blowjob, you're going to help raise money for kids. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah. <laughs> Karma. No, uh, so... <laughs> Go on. Well, so we're all we're all doing uh on November second we're all playing video games twenty five straight hours to raise money for uh, Children's Miracle Network. Basically, what we do we so like I said we play games for twenty five straight hours and we have friends, family, people just people uh, donate. There's there's thousands of people doing this. I think it's about seven eight thousand people doing this um, on November second. And what's going on is you get friends, family, just people to. To donate money to your account on extra-life.org, um, and just have them go, go on there. We're on the under talking ship group. You'll see Tyler, that's me. Knuckles is Jake, and then uh, Jack is Gabe. Yep. So on there, you can check out check out our pages on there and donate to us if you like. If not, 
share it, let people know that we're doing this, or you can just join yourself and do it. That that's great. I don't yeah. really care if I have twenty dollars or two thousand dollars. If I can get a couple people that don't the the join in or they donate to somebody else, that's great. I'll, I'm fine with that. So we really appreciate our, just we're just getting the word out there and just want gives many want to gives me eyes and ears onto that and more money to them. So. All right. Well, one last thing before we end here, I got a little announcement in regards to extra life for. I do have that day off, obviously, for November 2nd, since I actually did request it, and my boss kind of chuckled at me when I requested it. <laughs> but for this Extra Life thing, I'm going to be doing a special thing where I'm going to be streaming a whole bunch of Nintendo games. I'm going to be playing nothing but Nintendo-oriented stuff from uh, on my Twitch account. And I'll give you guys a little bit more details during the weeks leading up to uh, the actual day, so please look forward to that. <laughs> All right. Sounds Go good, back buddy. to the extra thing real quick. Okay. It started back in uh, 2008, and it raised a total of 115,000. Mm-hmm. 2009, it raised 170 th- over 170,000. 2010, it raised 451,000. Mm-hmm. 2011, it raised one over 1.1 1. 1 million. Which is a huge fucking rate boost. Yep, yeah. Double. Last year, um, I think it raised like... 2.2. 2.2. So it's doubled. It doubled. And I guess they're, they're on pace to, maybe not double, but they're on pace to beat that again this year. Yeah. yeah. So beat Or beat the 2.2 million they raised last year. So Momentum. Um, uh, yeah, that's great. So it's getting bigger every year, and now they got Sony behind them, which is great. Oh, yeah. Like they uh, had Sony and X- Microsoft yeah, but now on Sony, them last year. Microsoft's not got their own thing now, but no, Sony's actually doing a thing where if you uh, if you enter, if you raise money, there's certain brackets you can get to. Where if you raise ten dollars, you get a free month of PSN Plus. Yeah, uh, I think I think if you get if, uh, was it like two hundred like four hundred dollars or something, you get a Vita. Oh. I think it is. And if I think whoever raises the most money of everybody on Extra Life. They get a PS4 and their entire launch lineup. Man, that is just crazy. So, I'm going to take out a five thousand dollar loan. Yeah, <laughs> just go up to my bank. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to buy a house. Need two hundred thousand dollars. Just throw it in there. Of course, I can just buy a PS4 and the entire launch lineup for like a thousand. So that's not that's not. But it's for cancer. That's not the yeah. point. It's for cancer. <laughs> and then you can just climb back on your taxes and then pay yeah. off your loan. So you got free. Children got helped. You got a free PS4 in the launch lineup, and the bank is paid. It's yeah, all a win-win. it's a win-win. It's a win-win for you win-win. guys. All right. <laughs> well, anyway, let us us go ahead and end this show for this week, episode 19. I've been your host, the Jack of Hearts. I've been Ginger Boy, and I've been that random jackass. <laughs> <laughs> so until next week, everybody. See ya. Farewell, and you know, peace. Good night. <laughs> Route! to me beers there anyways we're on itunes now so go on there check us out and if you like us leave us a review and we'll even shout you out and jack will send you his credit card number